grace. She does not get rattled out there, and she's a true team player. She doesn't have to have a 20-point game. She just wants that job. It is loud here in Castle Coliseum, and rightfully so. The Virginia Tech Hokies ranked ninth this week, their highest ranking since 1999. We are underway. Kitley and Markowski battling for the ball, and it ends in the hands of Georgia Amor, the junior point guard out of Australia. Immediately into Liz Kitley, in on the post, and Kitley fading away, textbook stuff from the preseason player of the year. Wow. A, a fadeaway jump shot to start, and you're right, Virginia Tech, they're going to be very purposeful. Kitley will get a touch on every possession. Starting five for the Corn Huskers. You see Markowski there. We talked about her at the top of the show. Jazz Shelley, you mentioned there, getting her first shot of the game. Offensive rebound there for Allison Widener will not go. Virginia Tech looking to push as they like to do. Amor and Jazz Shelley. Oh my goodness. How about the crossover for Georgia? Amor breaking some ankles in the first quarter. Too tight. She came out blazing right off the tip. A great assist and then a move. Ooh, that got the crowd going. Hot start for the Hokies. There's Jazz Shelley on the ball. Markowski getting a touch here on Kitley. Now dumped into Isabel Bourne. That's a nice move in the paint for the 6'2 junior from Australia. We got four Australians playing in this game, Brooke. I love it. Such international flavor. And that's where the, the women's game, the men's game, everywhere it's headed. I mean, you look at teams like we're seeing tonight. You can look at South Florida. They have an international roster every year. UConn is starting five different players from five different countries this year. But this is a sight to behold. It's giving retake my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. You love it when you catch somebody off guard like that. You know, you kind of jump, and when you can get the defender to rise up with you, that's when you know you won, because you can take them off balance. See the numbers there for Georgia Amor continues to get better and better each season that she is working under head coach Kenny Brooks, who is a point guard himself. So that one goes out of bounds, a turnover, hands it back to the Hokies. And what a great get for Coach Brooks in his seventh season and comes in tonight with actually an undefeated record in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. 5 0 for Coach Brooks. Ashley Owusu working on the post, kicks it out to Taylor Soul. Two of the transfers added to Coach Kenny Brooks' squad. A little step back here for Abel. Yes, nice. Come on, she's shown us her skill set early on in this game. A simple post-entry pass, but it went right to the right place for Kitley. That crossover, and now another move. Averaging 11 and a half points per game this year. The six assists as well leads the team. Markowski nice. puts one up and in. Look, Markowski will not back down. This is what makes this sophomore so much fun to watch and, and why she's the best rebounder of the Big Ten right now. She went up against Michigan's, uh, Mississippi State, excuse me, her, Jessica Carter. Now she only had six points, but she came up with 15 rebounds and absolutely went to work on her down low. She's looking for that same fun opportunity today. Amor is showing out tonight in Castle Coliseum. Nine to four, and Amor has seven of the nine. Nice move from Jazz Shelley with the answer on the other end. This is going to be a trap meet tonight, Brooke. These two teams I, like to run. I mean, I'm loving it. Like, let me shut up and just let these ladies go to work. <laughs> they are doing it tonight. This is, this is fun because you have two teams that are really efficient with the ball. There's not a lot of turnovers or wasted dribbles. So this is a fun type of atmosphere to watch if you're a true basketball fan. Amor, top of the key, misses to the left. This Hokies averaging 82 points a game. Nebraska averaging 73 a game. High scoring teams, two on one. Bounce nice pass dish. to Taylor Souls. Okay, I need to know what a more ate for pregame meal today because <laughs> I need to eat that every single day of my life. She is on fire. If there's any scouts watching this game, they are taking notice. That gets Taylor Soul going to the grad transfer from Boston College. That three is off for Markowski. This is a Nebraska team that every player 
that has played so far this year has made at least four threes. So this is a team that is deep from beyond the arc. Kitley this was thought a great. Right? I mean, they've made a three in every single game since 2008. That is a pretty cool stat. Georgia Avor has scored or assisted on every single basket so far. Not Kelly surprise. Off the mark there, well defended by Markowski. That's where Markowski can can gain an advantage because Kitley doesn't mind to shoot off her back foot. She's okay at it also because she's so long. But if Markowski can kind of bump her on the way out, it's really going to throw her off balance as she just slowed down Owusu right there. Uh-oh. Can't leave her open in the corner. Bit too strong. Ball still loose. Kitley picks it up. And a fresh 20 for the Hokies. Right back right down back to in. her. Look, we're on the same page here. You see it too. Hot potato, ball in her hand. She sees the opening. And to me, she's playing purely off reaction right now. You're seeing somebody playing in the zone. Kitley and Amor with 11 of the Hokies. 13 points here in the first quarter. We only had really one stoppage of play, and that was the lone foul on Liz Kitley. Better be in shape for this game. Here's Taylor Soul looking to go over the top. Good seal there from Kitley. And the foul on Markowski. We're off to a hot start here in Castle Coliseum. Look at that. Georgia A4 has come to play tonight, folks. 13 to 6. Just getting started. 420 left to go in the first quarter. Out of owners, insurance. Led at the half actually by 10, Brooke, but Virginia Tech outscored Nebraska by 25 in the second half to win it 76-67. They improved to 7-0 that year. It was the first year for head coach Amy Williams and head coach Kenny Brooks, but Amy Williams has done an excellent job at Nebraska. The 2018 Big Ten Coach of the Year took this team to the NCAA tournament last year for the first time since that 2018 season. She's got them out to a 5-2 start. And then, of course, on the other side, head coach Kenny Brooks in his seventh season. The job that Kenny Brooks has done here is just remarkable, Brooke. I mean, when you look at what he has built the last six seasons, the, the, you have to remember, this Virginia Tech team was winning like one, two, maybe four games a year in the ACC before Coach Kenny Brooks got here. Now he's got him in a uh, potential Final Four conversation this year. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa now. The, from what I'm told, the words Final Four are not on our players' lips. This is according to Virginia Tech staff. But it, it, all joking aside, I think this could be a team. I agree with you. That could be Final Four bound if all the pieces come together and the chemistry hits at the right time. They certainly have the experience. I mean, a lot of times that's what gets you far in the tournament because you don't get afraid of anything. You've seen every situation. 7-0 run for the Hokies and a three-minute scoring drop for Nebraska. Brook. Transition three for Kayla King. Way downtown is no good. Why not test the waters? Kayla King is the one you want shooting threes. Fifth all-time at Virginia Tech with more than 160 coming into this game. And Nebraska is getting pushed around. I think Virginia Tech is making them so spaced out, but they're not giving them any easy buckets. Right? We're not seeing inside paint touches or movement the same way the Hokies are doing it. They seem to be the much more patient offensive team. Taylor Soul on the blow-by gets bumped. Out. Foul going against Isabel Bourne. That's her first. Her second team foul. Actually going to be her second personal her second foul, personal so she foul. will check her out. Foul. And Kendall Coley, the 6'2 sophomore from Minneapolis, Minnesota, will enter the game. And bounce to Kitley. She's left wide open. That's a lot of space for the uh, preseason player of the year in the ACC. Got a little lucky there. The whistle underneath. This weekend, we have Duke, North Carolina on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Saturday, the number 17 Blue Devils hosting Boston College at Cameron Indoor. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern time. And Sunday, number 18 Tar Heels taking on Virginia Tech in the second game of our doubleheader that starts at 1 Eastern time. Should be two great afternoons of hoops.
Pretty interesting to see Duke out in Portland go up against Purdue. The surprising team, I think, of that tournament, uh, Zach Edius. All seven feet, four inches of him was full out on display. And then Carolina last night, now, I don't know what happened to them, but against Indiana, the Hoosiers made it so hard. And Carolina's guards took such difficult shots. It was weird to see Carolina in a position they're in. Returned so much from that team last year. Trying to make a yes. run this year. So a little bit disjointed start for the Tar Heels. Not so for Virginia Tech here to start <laughs> this one. Liz Kitley fading away off the mark. Markowski's been able to push her away from the basket a little bit, and that's Scott Liz off her game just a tad. Right? Do you see that? Do you see what I'm saying? Right? She can shoot those off-balance shots, but if you give her a little bit, just a little nudge, that is going to affect the trajectory of the shot. So I think Kitley can work for better position and get easier shots inside. Well, she returns the favor defensively on Markowski there. Nebraska now 0 for their last 7 from the floor. And with Kitley's length, Markowski has to really create separation and space like a Wusu can with her step back. I mean, it's just a thing of beauty. I love watching this young lady have the ball in her hands. The vision and what she can create, it's been so much fun. Ever since the McDonald's game, to watch her game develop. Behind the back, step back. I compare her, I feel, to a Chelsea Gray who can play a little post as well. So Chelsea Gray with the touch of put, but Chelsea Gray can post up too. I like the comp. Ashley Owusu, one of the uh, two major transfers coming into Virginia Tech this season for head coach Kenny Brooks. The former Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year returning back to the Commonwealth. Standout career at Maryland and the reigning and my Myers Drysdale Award winner bringing that versatility and the dynamic play you just saw into Castle Coliseum. 18 to six, just about a minute and a half to play here in the first quarter. What does Markowski do there? Couldn't get it to go. Markowski, a slow start, one for four from the field. A little hesitation there, Amor lost it. Now Nebraska in transition, that's Kendall Moriarty in the open Kendall floor. Moriarty. 6'1 sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois. Now that's the, the hard, tough way to do it, but that will get you back in the game every time. Play tough nose defense, and you know Amy Williams is one to not let her ladies lack on defense. So you see it in the right, right? you see a difference in their energy Second level these last one, eh, minute or two. Seven. They have to create some offense from defense in order to, to help your jump shots fall. This is a Virginia Tech team that doesn't really turn it over a whole lot. 13 turnovers a game, good for second in the ACC. So that is a challenge for Nebraska, but that's back-to-back -back turnovers now on the defensive end for the Cornhuskers. Here's Jazz Shelley, got open for a three, rattles in and out there. Owusu taps it up in the air. Amor, quick outlet pass. Charlize think, Dunn has entered the game as well. I feel like the speed at which Virginia Tech started this game, it's taken Nebraska some time to even just catch up. I think they were, for they were put on their heels as Owusu steps off the floor. She's just holding that finger. finger there, yeah. And this is already a bit of a short bench for Virginia Tech here in this game. But here's another look at it. And you can see she, she touches on the tip. I couldn't tell if she felt like she stubbed it or not. She didn't show any reaction that showed pain. So she's headed back to the locker room, so we'll keep you updated oh. as much as we can. Oh boy. Meanwhile... Kayla King cashing down the three, gets the foul to go along with it, Brooke. Yeah, definitely their best shooter. And you can see, look at that form. Sets up, her hands are ready, and Amor delivers. Kayla King dropped in 33 points in the season opener against Mount St. Mary's, who, by the way, was a tournament team last year. She made nine threes in the game. That set a new program record. New Not program no perfect 10. <laughs> That's amazing. On opening night, too. I mean, right? get it done. Yeah, Coach Brooks says that she's like their security blanket because she's such a smart player. When you get smart player with range like that, yeah, I'd say so. Ten seconds to go here in the first quarter. 
12 to 2 run for Virginia Tech. And as Haymore will toss one up from the logo, she's made a couple of those in her career. That one will not go. As Virginia Tech, the ninth ranked team in the country, out to a good start against the Cornhuskers here at home. 21 to 8. Second quarter coming up next. Her range in this game. Quick hands, the junior, 5 6. Yes, do it for the shorties. And the Aussie invasion. I think it's 11.30 local, Sam. You looked it up the time there, so hopefully we've got some Aussie fans. What is the expression? Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Full of them in this game. I was waiting for you to work a mate into this game. I'm looking oh. forward to that when you when you can work one in. If it's com yeah, if it's common oh, enough, I just didn't want it to make it sound like, oh, that's you think that's what all Australians say, huh? Is mate. <laughs> Let's go, mate. Allison Widener. Getting in the scoring column, her first bucket of the game. Georgia Amor, seven points in that first quarter, dishes it off to DeAsia Gregg. Little spin move there, and the paint puts it up with the left. The follow from Kitley, and that's up and in. Liz Kitley now with a total of six. And it's all the footwork she did to get herself in good position to rebound. And that's those are the things that maybe aren't highlighted, but they are what leads uh, lead to her being one of the best bigs in the country. 6.7 rebounds. That's not a bad start for Liz Kitley. Talked about it too. Virginia Tech a little bit short on the bench here in this game. Kayana Trailer is out. Not available for the Hokies here. We saw Ashley Owusu depart in the latter parts of that first quarter with an apparent injury, so keep an eye on that. Georgia Amor launches a three and hits. Georgia Amor, 10 points in the game. She is four for seven from the field. In the corner there, Isabel Bourne is no good. Offensive rebound though for Widener. I'd like to see Jazz Shelley get involved in this game, but it is quite intimidating for someone who loves to drive and create off the bounce to get past Kitley. So you see her run into a double team and immediately kick the ball back out. She hasn't been able to get involved much in this game at all. That's an 0 for 7 start as well for Nebraska from beyond the arc. So watch Elizabeth Kitley here. Watch how low she gets. Now I found out today that she played softball growing up and was a first baseman. So naturally, my next question, of course, Sam, is what is, what is it going to be? Well, if somebody like me makes a bad throw in the infield, are you able to do the splits to right. pick me up? She said yes. <laughs> Unbelievable first baseman being able to do the splits at 6'6". Six, six. Come on. An incredible athlete, Liz Kitley. And we also were told a great story for Coach Kenny Brooks that despite all the accolades that she has, Brooke, a lot of the trophies, actually all of them, sit in head coach Kenny Brooks's office. She's not no really kidding. interested in the trophies. She just wants her team to win. Yeah, memories are better than trophies. If you're known as the GOAT, you don't need any piece of hardware to show it off. There she is, hand in the face from Larkowski. That shot off the mark. Good pass there underneath and a foul on Deisha Gregg. But you see, Liz Kitley, player to watch this year, no question about it. Preseason player of the year, the reigning ACC player of the year over Elisa Kinane last year, her friend and buddy growing up. Naismith Award watch list. You can look up and down pretty much any watch list, Brooke, and uh, you'll find Liz Kitley's name on it. Well, I know Debbie Antonelli is a big Liz Kitley fan and has you know, sang her praises for a while. And you know, true enough, I mean, she does do the work. 1,500 career points, the double doubles. And she's a type of player who just wants to get better. She doesn't care if she takes five shots, 20 shots. It, it's about knowing the importance of what a, you can do as a team, right? It, if you have average 20 points a game and you don't get to Final Four or the second weekend like they really want to, is Nebraska player down looks like they've taken an elbow to the face. Trinity Brady here. Mm. And there's Greg, DeAsia Greg. Trying to move the ball from one side to the other. Certainly it, not meant to be, but you see Coach Brooks there saying, hey, sweep it low next time. So DeAsia Greg with her second foul official to take a look at it. Virginia Tech still leading 26 14 with seven minutes left to go in the half. 
Since I was little, I wanted to be a part of a team. All right, so here was the foul that took us to break. Deanna Gregg, there you see the elbow go right into the face there of Trinity Brady. What do you see, Brooke? Yeah, I mean, certainly not intentional as, as far as I can see, but but excessive, unnecessary. Those foul are the big words two. that the you review when you're looking at the foul. foul was it uh, necessarily a legitimate play on the ball, but uh, it was that contact. They looked heavily above the shoulders, and certainly it was a swinging elbow. It was excessive, unnecessary. I think it's a great call. You know, Greg's certainly not out there to, to hurt anybody. Uh, and you see, saw Coach Brooks say, hey, next yeah. time just take that ball and sweep it low. So a teaching moment. So a couple of free throws for Nebraska. And Annika Stewart, the 6'2 sophomore from Plymouth, Minnesota. And Hokies ball as well with the upgrade and the foul. That is the second foul, by the way, on DeAsia Gregg. But like we said, Virginia Tech is a little bit short on the bench here today, so Greg going to stay in the game. 26-16, under seven to go here in the first half. What would you like to see Nebraska do here on this Virginia Tech team to try to get some offense going, Brooke? Well, I would like to see them continue to move the ball from one side to the other. You know, sometimes they've been getting stuck with one or two dribbles and a shot. I like that shot from Markowski. You want post touches, and then you need to kick it back out to the paint if you don't have anything. Nebraska has not been able to move Virginia Tech and spread out their defense versus when you watch Virginia Tech. I mean, look at this. Look at how wide everybody is. A little handoff there for Amor looking for help. Finds Taylor Soul in the corner, and Taylor Soul hits a three. She was 0 for 5 from beyond the arc coming into the game. That's her first three of the season. Georgia Amor went to the deck hard there on the contact from Maddie Kroll. Back to her feet. We'll take the ball up for Virginia Tech. Taylor Soul thought about it. This time on the dribble drive. An offensive foul. Oh, on Taylor Soul. All right, keep in mind, Wednesday, we got a featured women's basketball game right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Liz Kitley and the number nine Hokies are up in Chestnut Hill to take on a very balanced and a very young Boston College team. It's the first ACC matchup for both teams. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern time here on the ACC Network. Second foul on Taylor Soul. So the foul's starting to mount a little bit. Two on Soul. You got two on DeAsia Gregg, one on Kitley. And for a short bench, that could be, well, that's what you that's what you get when you drive into the lane and get a healthy serving of Elizabeth Kitley behind <laughs> you. You, know, you want to try to drive, yes, but you have to know what you're up against. And you're probably going to get embarrassed if you come on in there. I'm not taking a shot. Kayla King whistled for a foul here. So what I'm saying, Sam, is this is a way for Nebraska to get back in the game. Yep. And if I'm Nebraska, my aggressive meter is getting turned way up right now. If I'm Coach Williams, I'm saying seek contact. Keep getting everybody in foul trouble because now you're the more aggressive team. And most likely, the officials are going to blow the whistle your way when you're the more aggressive team. It's just how it works. Taylor Guyman also into the game, the senior guard. Here's Markowski for three in and out. Kitley brings in her ninth rebound. And a struggle for Nebraska here in the first half, shooting 27% from the floor. They are 0 for 8 from 3. Liz Kitley fouled on the way up, so she'll go to the line to shoot two, going against Markowski. That's her second. See this one again. Maybe Markowski got it with the body. It didn't look like she got in arms. You see Kitley again getting low, trying to get underneath the shoulders. And yeah, Markowski got her with the left arm and shoulder there, a contact just enough. And Kitley is so good with the footwork that she's able to make a move around you as well as create that contact. And Markowski has gone up against some bigs this season. We mentioned Jessica Carter. And she actually committed to Duke as an eighth grader. Oh, no, I'm sorry, South Dakota State she committed to at first. But she was getting interest from Duke as early as eighth grade. 
Wow. And then finally works through some early feet injury, foot, foot injuries in high school. And got to a place where she was getting recruited by Nebraska. She said, I'm in. That's the first three of the game, and it falls for Annika Stewart for Nebraska. She's averaging eight a game. That was one of the things that Coach Kenny Brooks told us in our call today, that he was a little bit scared that if this Nebraska team could get hot from beyond the arc, that could make things challenging. That went off the side of the backboard for Guyman, but there's Amor. Shot clock does not reset. Five on the shot clock. Double team underneath goes out of bounds. Last touch by Kitley. Good job by Nebraska to send help side as the pass is being made. You don't want to wait till Kitley has the catch and then double her. You want to try to get to that pass before it gets to her. So that was good recognition and awareness. And Sam, yes, Nebraska is a good three-point shooting team. And it's like, how do you roll the dice, right? Do you, do you keep taking threes or do you try to take it to Virginia Tech and get them in more foul trouble? You have to be very decisive with your shots and not turn it over. Turnover there, bobbled out of the hands of Allison Widener. Just the third turnover of the game for Nebraska. Down to Kitley. Where does Kitley go here? Tough shot. And again, well defended by Markowski. Can't ask for a better shot than that if you're Nebraska. And this is a team that, yeah, they're, they, they're about to get hot at any moment. Both teams really can light it up from three. And this has been an interesting game to, to watch how that hasn't really been a major part of it yet. Well, Nebraska, they do make around eight and a half threes a game. This Virginia Tech team has been really, really good defensively so far to start this year. They're allowing, on average, 45 points a game. That's best in the conference. You can see why. I mean, you go inside and you've got Kitley to bother you. So the guards can take more chances knowing you've got a great shot blocker back there. And, and you can play more aggressive. Up the lanes, taking chances on steals, all that. You know you have a 6'6 player like Kitley behind you. Yeah, I'm going to try to get a lot more steals. <laughs> I'm also going to let players maybe beat me and try to tip it from behind to Kitley because I know she'll have to come out for help side. A lot of coaches hate that. They think it's lazy. But it works. Kenny Brooks opts for a 30-second timeout with Virginia Tech on top by 11. 2.34 left to go in the second quarter. We pick up the phone because it's ringing. All right, welcome back. Virginia Tech and Nebraska here in this ACC Big Ten Challenge. The 15th and final iteration of the challenge, Brooke. We move to the ACC SEC Challenge uh, next year. It's been exciting to have the ACC Big Ten Challenge. It's always cool to hear the players and their experiences get to go and travel, see other gyms that you otherwise normally wouldn't see. I agree. I think it's such a cool big brand matchup, and, and I'm excited to see what the ACC SEC feel and, and the rivalries that, that come out of that. I mean, being in Indiana last night, that's the first time I've been on that campus since I tried to recruit myself there. When I was 15, <laughs> showing up at coaches' offices like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm all of 5'6", you want to sign me? But what an environment it is. And, and, you, and the fans love it, too. I mean, fans want to see different matchups and big-time matchups. How did that go when you walk into coaches' offices and say, so how about... Uh, they're surprised, <laughs> right? So tell me a little bit about yourself, meaning like I had no idea who you are. <laughs> but hey, it worked. I got to I got to college on a scholarship, sort of, for softball. So somebody listens. Exactly. It worked out in the end. Yes. And for Nebraska, you see creeping back in every now and then. And one or two threes, <laughs> that's all it's going to take. Because if you're Virginia Tech, now you have the back of your mind. You're, you're playing a bit hesitant. With the foul trouble, here comes Nebraska. Monica Stewart, the last eight points for Nebraska, now on a 6-0 run. Kayla King looking for an answer off the back iron and the rebound for Isabel Bourne. So here come the Cornhuskers, now down by eight. But a turnover will not help. 
you know, miscue an opportunity as well for Nebraska, but the spacing much better. Quick passing, react to shoot if you got it. Nice release there for Maddie Kroll. If you can create some assists, Sam, that's that's always a nice way to, to also open up your offense. And Jazz Shelley, for the game she isn't having offensively, she's got four assists already in the first half. So she is doing quite well for the, for the Huskers, getting them points on the board, just not directly. Two threes for the court Huskers here in the second quarter. Went 0 for 4 in the first. Kitley, hesitation there, able to elevate over Markowski. You saw Virginia Tech, or excuse me, Nebraska switch to a zone, and Kitley very comfortable with range, as she'll have to be. Every big now has to shoot threes in the WNBA. There's no exception. Hard foul there as Greg goes to the ground. Greg trying to get herself in a position to take that and perhaps looks, maybe she was in the charge circle. Why she didn't get the call, but you can tell she took a lot of contact there, still holding her midsection. Foul goes against Callan Hake, the freshman for Nebraska. Ten point oh, game a under a minute to go. Oh, it was a charge. I apologize. Kitley from the elbow. Rattles around, and it ends up in the hands of Nebraska. Trying to make a push here. They were down quite a bit in this game. And another one for Annika Stewart. Already in double figures here in the first half. She's a, a great player for them. 23 points off the bench in their win over Texas A&M. You need that. They've been searching for that offense. And they have a much a stronger presence of confidence. I know you feel that too, watching Nebraska this quarter versus the first quarter. And the way this game started, Nebraska's done a great job of fighting back. Four to shoot for Greg. DeAsia Greg cashes it in. Half court heave, no good for Jazz Shelley in Virginia Tech. Ends the first half with a 35-24 lead. It's a good start for the ninth ranked Virginia Tech Hokies here. Be able to cash in a couple of threes there. Six for three. Markowski just two and going up against the long and lengthy Kitley is not an easy feat. Liz Kitley, like we said, a quiet nine points and ten rebounds. One point away from what would be her sixth straight double-double this season. Taylor Soul backs it back out. Amor pops a three. A little bit short and ends up getting her own rebound. And a quick shot there for Kayla King in the corner. And they don't waste Kayla any time. King, nine points now in the game. First half summary here. Second quarter scoring, Nebraska played a little bit better, made a pair of threes after going 0 for 4 in the first quarter. Ashley Owusu was injured in the latter parts of the first quarter, did not play in the second. Bench points, heavy advantage to Nebraska. There is Ashley Owusu still on the bench. You see the tape there on her right hand, so we'll keep an eye and see if Ashley reappears in this game. But uh, once again, Virginia Tech without Kayana Trailer in this game, so already a short bench. Offensive rebound, Markowski might have had that one adjusted by King and foul underneath. Goes against Widener. And Virginia Tech, you know, perhaps not in as much foul trouble as you kind of think. A couple players with two fouls. And so without the services uh, of Owusu, yeah, you do have to make big adjustments. You know, you already knew you didn't have trailer for the game. She's kind of their sixth starter, their X factor. And doesn't play a ton of minutes, but if she did, you know, she'd be averaging about 20 a game. She doesn't even play 25 minutes, but also gets 10 boards, 10 points. And Nebraska also without Sam Hyde, second team all-conference player for them. Whoa! Count Georgia Amor. <laughs> Count the basket, she says. It's, it's the reaction is everything for me. Not even just the, the great move. Hezzy. A runner. Oh, I didn't catch that the first time. This is a nice runner. I know that's right. Count it, count it, count it. 
Misses the and one though, but George Amor out to yeah. one point, seven boards, seven assists. Getting close to that triple-double. There has never been a triple-double in Virginia Tech basketball history. So, uh, we're on the verge of history here, Brooke. Well, having Notre Dame in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year, watching Olivia <laughs> Miles go to work with her triple-double, it, it's so enjoyable to see a player affect the game in so many ways. Nebraska really has to get Jazz Shelley going, right? I mean, coming off a 32-point performance against Mississippi State, just two points here in this game. You know what? That's a great point. You're right. She hit four straight threes in that game. She had eight assists. That was a big game for her. So I'm sure you, know, you take a look at what she did. You make adjustments. And, again, she's had trouble just getting in the paint, but who hasn't? Right. Ball in Shelly's hands here, driving oh. and it's swatted away. De'Asia Gregg, <laughs> an emphatic <laughs> swat. De'Asia, it's, it's hard not to get excited for this block. Goodness, does the thing, just a little stare down, just a little bit, not enough <laughs> to get attacked, just a little bit. I, I personally, as you can probably imagine, am way for more reaction time. Come on, let the ladies have some emotion. I would like to see it. Moving screen there on Markowski. That's going to be her third. Now she's trying to create, right? That, that gets her into big time trouble. And that's what she and Jazz Shelley do really well. A lot of ball screens, as we saw in that highlight. It got Markowski that open three. She could knock it down. But that's a good way for Nebraska to continue to try to create offense. Liz Kitley off the mark. Four for 12 from the floor for. Liz Kitley, a player that's shooting well over 50% from the floor so far this year. Here's Markowski on the other end, and she puts it up and in. Markowski now with four points in the game. Virginia Tech fresh off a uh, trip down to the Bahamas over the Thanksgiving break. One in Sam, and out. She would have made that. I had to throw my headsets down and walk out <laughs> of my little home studio. That move was really nice. Good answer from the Huskers. On the other end, transition three for the Australian Isabel Bourne. I think we should just have an Aussie off for the rest of the game. <laughs> I like that. Only Aussies can shoot. One on one here. Because I don't want to take Kitley out of this game either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Preseason player of the year. Needs to be able to shoot the ball. Yeah, it's been a bit, yeah. of a, bit of a struggle here for Kitley. A little on bar out into yeah. the chest of Georgia Abel. What has this young lady done? Well, we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This Winter ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic or take a video with the hashtag AllTheDevotion and post it to your social. Just might see it on ACC Network. Brooke has already uh, posted a uh, picture, I'm sure. Have I? Oh, my. I, I must have <laughs> on that. I, I volunteered I, you. I, I, would say, I will say, I was going to say, in Portland, we had some fans wear an ear camp. And that got some pretty cool wow. perspectives. So I'm sure some fans out there can top that as Taylor Soul tops a three. Little Jordan shrug there for Taylor Soul, who came into this game <laughs> 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. Now has made two threes. You know, sometimes when you got it, you got it. Keep on shooting. You're going to give her that space. And I love the confidence. It's like, well, it looks like I'm on fire today, ladies. Go ahead and give me the ball again. Nice move. Good move there for Callan Haig. Getting her first points of the game on her first attempt from the field. A 2,000 point scorer in high school, so she certainly comes in and you know, knows how to create for herself. Anybody that has that many points, you, you know how to create for yourself. And that's where Nebraska maybe needs some help. Too many steps there for Taylor Soul. She was asking for some contact. There was some there. Kenny Brooks not all that thrilled. 
Ball back in Nebraska's hands. Nebraska team that has zero seniors on it right now. Advanced to the Big Ten semifinals last year and knocked out of the first round of the NCAA tournament by Gonzaga last year. Born with a post move. Got bumped on the way up. Born will go to the free throw line to shoot two. As it stands right now in the third quarter, Virginia Tech leading at 43-31. Urgent need for cancer research. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate 100%. Of your donation goes directly to cancer research. One in three women and one in two men in the U.S. will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. There are 18 million cancer survivors today in the U.S. That number is expected to rise to over 22 million by 2030. Every dollar helps. That is v.org slash donate. Bourne goes one for two at the free throw line. Still an 11 point game. It's kind of hovered around that mark. Nebraska was able to cut it to eight at one point. But it's uh, kind of been comfortably in double digits for Virginia Tech. Liz Kitley, one on one with Annika. Fading away and Liz Kitley, six straight double doubles for the preseason player of the year. You know, when in doubt, you go back to what your superstar can do for you. Every time an offense ha an offensive possession happens, Kitley is likely to get a touch, and you see why. She just draws the defense in, forces you to really focus all your defensive energy on her. So she's either going to finish or she's going to get an assist. ACC Big Ten Challenge, a lot of games going on elsewhere as well. Indiana put a hurt on North Carolina earlier today. 87-63 was the final in that game, Brooke. Surprising or not surprising? You just saw them out west in Portland in that championship against Iowa State. I'm very surprised. You know, what a game. Indiana stepped up holding Carolina scoreless and th turning them over three times in the last five minutes. Just taking a look at the stats right here. And uh, just kind of wondering what happened to Carolina, because usually they get stronger as the game goes on, but Indiana's defense seems to be really turned up tonight. Parrish had 24 points. Mackenzie Holmes had 25. And an impressive showing for Indiana in a top six matchup there. But uh, make no mistake, those are going to be two teams that we're going to talk a lot about down the stretch of this season. Nebraska team was ranked in the uh, top 25 in the AP preseason poll. Dropped out after a couple of tough losses. Well, this weekend we have Duke and North Carolina on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Saturday, number 17, Blue Devils hosting Boston College at Cameron Indoor. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern time. And Sunday, the number 18, Tar Heels. Take on Virginia Tech in the second game of our doubleheader that starts at 1 Eastern time. Baycott, Butts, a couple of key players for those two teams. North Carolina, a little bit of a difficult start, I guess you could say. A little bit of a uh, questionable start, certainly a concerning start for some fans there after they returned so many players from last year's team. I think you're putting it lightly for Carolina fans. I mean, are they not ringing the bells, the alarms, yeah. the, the ram horns, all the things? And Baycott right now, though, is not, uh, to me, he's not at 100%. He still has that angle inju injury. I did not see him get a lot of lift last night in his shots. Uh, but I know Justin Mutz is a competitor and is very much looking forward to that game. In and out for Kayla King there. Hokie shooting 44% from the floor. And a timeout called by Amy Williams. 14-point lead for the number ninth ranked Virginia Tech Hokies looking to improve to 7-0 on the season. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life better. Losses to good teams though, Brooke Weisbrook. Yeah, you know, UCLA is a good team. I, I like Kiki Rice. She's one of the best recruits to play in the game and is a young star. So UCLA is a good squad. 
And they also lost to Gonzaga by one point. As you see Nebraska slowly creeping back, not going away easily. That's going to be a good game and a good test, though, for Virginia Tech and Tennessee. And the lane opening up just a bit. A rarity to see so much space in the paint for Nebraska to be able to get the layup with the ant one. Isabel Bourne leading all scorers in the game with 15 points. She is six for seven from the field today, one for two from three-point land. Nice drive there by Taylor Soul. Got bumped a little bit. That was pretty interesting talking to Kenny Brooks about the addition. Like a player like Taylor Soul, I asked him, have you ever coached a player like that before? He said, yeah, I've coached a player like her, but she's the most athletic player that I've ever coached. And I thought that's pretty high praise for a coach like Kenny Brooks. It is, I mean, because you're talking about a coach who's seen uh, players like T. Young, you know, who had yep. a lengthy career in the WNBA and certainly can hold more than, more than her own when it comes to athleticism. So, yeah, he's seen and coached some fantastic athletes, including Georgia Amore, who is on triple-double watch tonight. Stay close by. Two rebounds, two assists away. She's already got 12 points, so she's got that taken care of. Have not seen the return of Ashley Owusu in this game. Exited with an injury in the first quarter. There's Liz Kitley wrestling for the rebound there. Under two to play in the third quarter of this ACC Big Ten challenge between Virginia Tech and Nebraska. Georgia Amor is just dribbling circles around everyone. Here, Charlie's done. Her three is a bit too strong. And Nebraska needs to capitalize as we are watching tonight. The students showing up, and we know it's it's Enter Sandman time when you come in there. <laughs> I think it speaks in a larger picture to the program that Kenny Brooks has built and. Being a top 10 team, like we said, this is the first time Nebraska has been ranked ninth since 1999. A lot of the players on this team weren't even born the last time <laughs> that the nice attack was ranked this high. Now just great ball movement continuing for Virginia Tech. Their offense looking quite efficient. 11 assists on the night for the team out of 19 field goals. That's a great ratio. Nebraska doing uh, their thing as well. They've got 11 assists on 60 field goals. Uh, I'm not a math major, and I was pretty bad at math. However, I do know most coaches say 70% is the ratio they're looking for when you look at that assist to field goals. That's going to tell you that the ball's moving well, you're shooting a decent percentage, and you're spacing the floor. Nice. That's Markowski. Hit the triple. And Markowski now has seven. Her first three of the night, under 30 to play here in the third quarter. Little handoff there to Amor, coming off the screen. I mean, just reading. He was a two-time captain, and Alexis's story is great. I mean, she took a foot injury that could have taken her out freshman year, as you see Virginia Tech putting on a passing clinic. Liz Kittley having a good time out there, too. Yeah, but Markowski injured her foot and, and started focusing on defense, and she became a very dynamic player and heavily recruited. Deja Gray got the timeout off. Less than 30 seconds into this fourth quarter, we'll take a break. 57-42 here in this ACC Big Ten Challenge. It's a Boston College team that lost their top three scores from last year. Two of which, by the way, still playing in the ACC. One of which is on the floor right now. Taylor Soul. You have Cameron Schwartz playing her fifth year at Georgia Tech this year. 
And Georgia Amor going to line. Claire Ford also from Boston College. Yep. As you see, Georgia Amor at the line here. But you know, no doubt a good game with Rutgers and, and leading her team in blocks. Is, is I feel like on the men's side, it's, it is the year of the bigs. And I feel like on the women's side, that's going to be the discussion as well. I mean, as long as we have players like Kitley to talk about. Leah Boston, Cam Brink, I mean, it is it is yeah. the year of the big on both sides, really. It's a uh, season high 17 points for Georgia Amor tonight. Still two rebounds and two assists away from a triple-double. Asia Gregg trying to find Kitley. A little too much air under that pass. Last touch by Nebraska will stay with the Hokies. Check in for the Huskers. Number 42, Maddie Kroll. Maddie Kroll checking back into the game as Allison Widener heads to the bench. Amor. Seven on the shot clock. Amor, step back three. Hit it. Yeah. Nylon for Georgia. Amor. You are lying. She just hit that shot. That is the cleanest step back I have seen in the game this season. Wow. Hey, Virginia Tech has played with such great timeliness tonight. They play quick, but they're not in a rush. They're, they play hurry-up basketball. They're not anxious. They're spaced. I mean, this has been a really well-executed game offensively for the Hokies. Even inside. though they only have 62 points, <laughs> they're still getting it done inside. You're right. Kitley foul. She'll go the line with the and one. Amor off the screen. Low driving. Just leaving you. Now, Moriarty could not do a thing about it. Let me ask you this, Brooke. How much does the experience play a role into what you just said and their composure, and how big of a factor will that be down the stretch of a season playing in such a tough conference like the ACC? I think it, it can only help you because you, you've been seasoned, right? And there's nothing that can prepare you for how tired you get when you're emotionally spent, when you're anxious, when you, you don't expect a game to be as fast or a team to press as hard. When you're spent emotionally, it makes you physically tired and mentally tired. Virginia Tech has seen all of these situations and then some. So when you have eight seniors and nine players with more than four seasons put together a basketball, there's probably a good chance they've all been in the same situation before and know how to handle it better than they did last time. Ten on the shot clock. Soul fakes the handoff, gives it to Amos. Amor slips one through to Sol. She's got There's 10 assists. Ten. All right, two boards. She's got two boards to grab, and you can feel that the fans know it as well. She's got to get aggressive. Let's hope. Player from Nebraska is all right. Whoever just took a spill down there. That looked like a hard fall. Here's the assist. Great screen and roll. Little bounce pass. How many times have we seen her one-hand bounce pass into the perfect shooting pocket like my field goal percentage is going to go up if i'm playing with her because she knows how to pass through the ball it's her first double double of her career as annika stewart's three is no good just going back to that conversation about the experience look at the minutes on the floor brooke weisbrod over yes. seventeen thousand minutes it had me thinking about the 10,000 hour rule, right? I don't know how many minutes 17,000, yeah. or how many hours 17,000 minutes is, but yeah, that when you complete something for 10,000 hours, you are now a professional. So they've got that in hand. Liz Kitley starting to heat up here in the fourth quarter late. Kitley's got 20 now. Sixteen zero run going back to the third quarter for Virginia Tech. And it might continue as Greg brings in the rebound here. 6.30 to go in the game.
Monty Soul, little dribble, little drive action there. Tough to the rack for Taylor Soul. Well, we've seen threes, we've seen driving baskets, we've seen mid range. Uh, Virginia Tech, that's, that's what I'm saying offensively. Just look at what they've done tonight. Even though they only have 70 points, it feels, I don't know to you, but like they hit 90. Yeah. Well, this Virginia Tech team is for real. The fans inside Castle Coliseum know it. Here is this week's conference championship Saturday lineup. Coverage in Charlotte begins with ACC PM Friday at 4 Eastern time. Continues at 9 with the huddle. And Saturday, two-hour pregame show with the huddle crew. Kicks off 6 Eastern time then. After the game, head back to the ACC Network for a complete game breakdown with coach and player interviews. You can always watch on the ESPN app if you are out and about because nobody covers the ACC like we do. One of the biggest questions, Brooke, was where were they going to get production with the departure of Asia Shepard after she graduated? Taylor Soul has provided some of that production. Yeah, great spacing again. Look at that triangle offense. Able to create a nice wide open three. Beautiful transition bounce pass. And Taylor Soul shooting six of nine today. Also hit both of her threes, both of her free throws, four rebounds. Only a couple of turnovers. Only seven this afternoon for Virginia Tech. Great afternoon for Taylor Soul. Well, we talked about Liz Kitley playing softball. Taylor Soul was actually a spectacular soccer player in high school. Could have played in college. Went the basketball route. And uh, I'd say it's worked out pretty well so far. I'd say so. I didn't know that. But now you know Taylor Soul. If you're a soccer player, I think you just come with this ability to like never get tired. Soccer yeah. players can run for days. And Taylor Soul is going to be always in shape out there on the court. You know that. Uphill battle for Nebraska here against a very stingy Virginia Tech defense here this evening. Again, averaging just 45 points allowed per game. See a little of the defense there. Shot clock violation. Shot violation. Huskers. Virginia Tech has led this entire time and Coach Amy Williams very frustrated. You see felt Coach like Williams asking for a foul there. Felt like a foul was called. Yeah, she wanted a foul. And her team really struggling tonight, too, from behind the line. Just 417 for the Huskers. Wow, that's a couple of times, Brooke, we've seen a foul on a three-point shot from Nebraska. Just one of those careless fouls that make a coach really not too happy. Yeah, those ones, they hurt you a lot because they're so unnecessary. They're so far away from the basket. And you have to let players come down before you box them out. You know, that's a, a, a very high-risk play if you're defense. And if you're the offensive player, I mean, I, I'm concerned about my ankles always. And especially somebody comes running up on me trying to box out when I'm still in the air. I definitely want to be protected. A lot more action coming up, too, in this ACC Big Ten Challenge tonight. Georgia Tech, Michigan State just getting underway about 30 minutes ago. Michigan and Miami to follow us on the ACC Network as well. Here's the update in this ACC Big Ten Challenge. You saw Maryland take down number seven Notre Dame by two points. So the Big Ten showing out a little bit, making it difficult. It's uh, kind of been controlled by the ACC in the last couple of years. Oh, big wins. Indiana as well tonight uh, dominating North Carolina. Deja Kelly having an off night, but Indiana and Mackenzie Holmes did not have an off night. That's nice move. That. Liz Kitley doing what Liz Kitley does. Mm -hmm. Getting great position, so she makes it look easy for herself, but I, I guarantee you it's, it is a lot of hard work going up against Markowski to get the position Kitley does. It's Callan Haig drilling a three there.
Amor may want to go try and miss a layup herself so she can hook <laughs> herself up and <laughs> do rebounds. That one falls to Taylor Soul. Ten on the shot clock here. A little crossover from Taylor Soul. She gets fouled on the way up. Now, usually when you cross somebody up, you, you cross them out of their shoe. But Soul was so quick on that cross, she crossed herself out of her own shoe. How about that shoe game? Those are nice. I. I am not a. I know people think I know everything about. I do not know anything about sneakers. I think those are the new Lebrons, though, and they are very nice. And Lebron went to a low shoe. You know, Kobe was the first guy to do that. And Lebron's kind of caught on, uh, which is a big change from his 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 big boots like sneaker that he first right. came out with. I'm still waiting though to see women's shoes exclusively made. So we we'll, would love to see those players come out anytime now. I know Moolah Kicks is, is on the on the move there. They're the only company out there doing it. Shout out to Moolah, the Natalie White founder. A BC grad. There you go. Yeah. 76-47, Virginia Tech trying to improve to 7-0 and on the season. Big challenge awaits this Sunday up in Knoxville against a tough and hungry Tennessee team. There's a jump ball there. Possession arrow points to Nebraska. Jump ball, possession Nebraska. Chatting with some coaches out in Portland, and a couple of them said they, they want to see the jump ball. And they want to see players just go ahead and yep. go after it. And, and I think that'd be cool. I, I would love to see that change. I mean, I, you will hear me ad nauseum about the men's game needing to go to quarters because it does. Stop holding on, men's game. Come on. <laughs> you know you want to go to four quarters. I think there's coaches' support for that, too. I, I mean, from some of the coaches I've talked to, they, they're in favor of it. Oh, okay, because that's changed. Because I can tell you I talked to about 15 a few years ago, and not no one dice. of them. No, and not one had a good reason either. That's uh, rebound number uh, nine for Georgia yep. Amor. One rebound shy of a triple-double. She's got three minutes and 22 seconds to do it. <laughs> you can do it. Well, the way that Virginia Tech is playing offensively, she they may not miss too many shots here down the stretch. Now, had she followed her own shot there, she could have had a, a good chance at that board. And instead, she kind of faded away. 22, 9, and 10 for the junior guard out of Australia. So that's yeah. where these students, somebody needs to tell the students in the, in, in the stands, you know, start chanting, rebound, rebound. That's where, like, hey, what are the cheerleaders doing? Somebody get the SID out there. Let them know. Let them know. Nebraska, That's Carter over there, the Three SID of Virginia Tech, Tech over and, and, and pop a word into the students. They usually get pretty loud there. Fourth foul on Taylor Soul, so she will check out of the game. Charlie's done back into the game for the Hokies. You got a feeling that the student section is, is maybe either aware of it or will be aware of it soon. That's a foul they on might Don. Be. They might be, right? Because they you saw her going to the crash, crash the board there, and everybody kind of gave, gave the side. Good cross over here. We've been talking about crosses all night. <laughs> Done. Charlie surprised. We got it with the body. They like Dunn. They said that she's the wing of the future. And there's Amor, number five. Is the point guard of right now. Certainly, if she's still in the game at this point, they know. I kind of thought they might put her at the uh, down the lane, the, the free throw spot. shooting there. Yeah, nice oh. pass to Liz Kitley there. That's assist number eleven. Magic. Come out for two to ten. That is a full timeout. And head coach Kenny Brooks will take a thirty-second timeout. And he's now stretching it to a full timeout, but 78-49. Uh, 
with two and a half to go. All smiles for Coach Kenny Brooks right now. And all smiles for Georgia Amore. One rebound away from a triple-double. Shooting 50% on the night. And also gotten herself to the free throw line. I have just really loved the way she's played. Not only that, Sam, just one turnover in 38 minutes. This is one of the best games you will see played. No wasted dribbles. No extra shots. No bad shots. And then you have some no-look dishes like this on what looked like it could be a broken play. And she makes something out of nothing. The Coach Brooks speaks so highly of Georgia Amor, and it's been a, a tough road at times, too, because you got to remember Georgia Amor was here during the COVID season, unable to go back home and be with her family in Australia for a long, long time, but uh, was able to stay really close with her team and her teammates and grow through that, and now has played probably one of the biggest games of her career right now. All right, let's talk strategy how to get Georgia this rebound, shall we? <laughs> what, what can we do creatively? Can we put her on the shoulders of another player? Not nah, that could risk injury. Can't do that. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you have everyone else box out when they shoot? Virginia Tech should shoot, box out, and then allow her to go in for the miss. That's, <laughs> that's my strategy. That's what I'm putting down. Might be the first time you've ever seen a team shoot that uh -oh. box out for themselves. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, goodness. There's a whistle. Oh, goodness. <laughs> DA's are correct. All right, Miller. everybody knows. Now, this is great. <laughs> Defense steps up. Nebraska's still going to play tough. And the whole crowd, look. I love it. She's like, it's not mine. It's not mine. I don't want to touch it. How cool is that? Well, I'm sure her family is absolutely stoked to watch this happen right now. And I can only imagine what they felt like as well during that COVID yeah. year, not being able to connect with her. I mean, it was so hard for everyone. But I, I truly do feel for college students and the experience that they did and didn't have. Really hard. I'm with you. Two minutes to go here in the game. Ball down low, the miss. <laughs> Amor couldn't bring it in. Doesn't count. Nope. Got a hand on it. This is the most exciting rebound maybe in the history of Virginia Tech basketball. <laughs> See, she could have missed. She could have laid it up her left hand, yep. off the glass, caught it with her right, and finished in the air. I think that, that could have been like almost like a horse move that she's made many times in practice. That one falls through. Maddie Kroll making the shot there. And a 20 to play, 30 point lead for the number nine ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. Deja Gregg with a three off the back iron. One minute, one minute remaining. That one's off the mark. There it is. The there it is. Georgia Amor has a triple double, the first in program history. A little flair for the dramatic. Maybe she's got something special up her sleeve. Ten seconds to do it. 24, 10, and 11. How about that? Georgia oh, Amor, that's... career night. Charlie's done now back the other way. She catches it on the end one. Play up to the buzzer. <laughs> this is what I mean when experience matters. Experienced teams play every possession. Look at that cross. Okay, Charlie Dunn. I see he was the wing of the future. <laughs> what a special moment with Coach Brooks. Amor, her family, her teammates are excited. These are the things that, that really make the game great. I mean, 
we're seeing so many more players step up and have big days and moments. It's, you know, we're past the days of just saying one or two teams are good in women's basketball. You've got players triple doubles on the ready. This is awesome. How cool is that to now be in the record books? She was going to be anyways, but the first triple double in program history, and the crowd is chanting your name. <laughs> that is special. So special. And one turnover. I mean, she almost had, a, I guess if you could kind of do a turnover a of zero game. stat. Yeah, perfect game. Yeah, you, she needs to keep this one and go back in, in 30 years and, and be like, dang, I was really good. <laughs> 753 games in Virginia Tech history, and we have the first triple-double tonight for Georgia Abel. Well, the game of Amar really is just a reflection of how much this team stays together. They're experienced. They've got great chemistry and culture. Credit to Coach Brooks and his staff and the students for showing up tonight to support.